Hi, it's Tina. It's Renee here. Welcome to a safe place. If you really like what we say, please subscribe. We look forward to um, knowing that we are helping people in some way by sharing our stories. Renee mentioned in the last video, right at the end of it, that um, identity was a big issue. And um, for me, it was interesting listening to that because Renee said that as an XJW, she was finding things to do and that she didn't like being alone and learning how to be alone was an important skill that she had to learn. And I was struck by that because as a childhood trauma survivor, um, I love time alone for myself because for me, that means that no one can hurt me. I'm safe when I'm alone. And it's interesting that we have that uh, contrast in the way we've responded. And it's, it leads us into a discussion about identity, who we are before trauma and who we are after trauma. And I think that's probably where we need to go next is this exploration of identity. Who are we? How have we become this way? Is it good? Is it bad? So you were just reading out of um, Bonnie Zeman's book. Um, Bonnie is an XJW surviving and healing and she's written about her experiences and Renee was just reading a part out of there that um, <laughs> not we don't profit from recommending no, that don't. book, by the way. Um, <laughs> and we weren't asked it. to share it, but you know. Um, and now I've lost my point, so we're back to the heydays. But um, she was mentioning in there that um, sense of loss of purpose, a loss of direction. Who are you? So when you're in a high control environment, which is also the topic of the last video, everything's so regimented and controlled that you don't really have time to think about who you are or where you fit in the chain. You're just part of it and you just go through the motions. So then who, who do you become or who are you after that? After you lose that, so you go through the guilt initially of, of I should be doing this, I should be doing that, but in time that must pass. Where does that leave you as, as who you are? Can you remember? Look, there's even a lot more to that, if I may add. Mm -hmm. Like when you're when you're young as a Jehovah's Witness, um, your whole future is almost determined for you. So your career is determined for you. Your education is determined for you. When I say determined for you, I mean that there's so many options that you're not allowed to do. So for example, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to go into higher education like university. Um, or colleges some do some do so you can't there are exceptions to the rule if the family can sort of um, find an excuse somehow that they can get away with it but the majority don't in that actual fact in the latest shepherding book it says that if you're an elder and your child goes to university you have to be removed mm -hmm. or your, your privileges have to be stripped so they really don't want you to so yeah so your life is determined in the and you sense were similar to that because you loved learning you had a real strength for learning, didn't you? You liked learn, like you liked learning about music and learning to play yeah. piano, and obviously things that resonated with you. You loved learning. So well, I love learning. That's why my, I threw myself into the literature and tried to learn mm -hmm. everything about the witnesses. But as I was saying, um, you're not allowed to have this higher education. But there's a lot of predetermined things. You're not allowed to get jobs that will take too much time. You, you, you should only get menial jobs that allow you to pioneer. There's so many things that are predetermined. You're not allowed to um, mix with certain people. There are so, so there are so many ways that your identity is controlled. So one of the biggest questions for me is, if I was allowed to be just the kid I was, if I was just allowed to run outside and play, where would I have taken my play? Where would I have? Where would have my interests oh gone to? Renee, in her memoirs, has a section, I'm not sure if it's still there, it may have come out. Um, can you recall, it's my favourite part of the whole book. It says a lot about who you were prior to the programming. And it's about... <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> it's just that you asked who you were, or who you would be, and I'm thinking, well, I know who you were, because can you recall that story? No, you, you can have recall to that book. story. <laughs> no, I'm not going to recall that story because you that doesn't say who to. I am. I think it does. Um, so Renee was very fun loving and she was a little bit cheeky and, and she liked living life her way. That's how her book reads. So have do you think you've reclaimed that little bit of free spirit? 
as an adult now, 20 years I'm after. Trying. I'm trying, but I often wonder, as I said, yes, I was fun, loving and cheeky, maybe. And yeah, I was really suppressed as a JW child because I was really made to conform mm. to being a certain good little girl that... Wore dresses yeah, and wore not dresses. her I brother's hand-me-downs. I didn't want to and... wear dresses. Um, and I was forced to be somebody to be friendly and smiley and mm. to go and do this routine. Who would I have become? So I don't know. I think a lot of ex Jehovah's Witnesses grapple with that is they wish they could go back to their child time. Mm. And what choices would I have made? I wasn't allowed to have, to have any choices you made. Can I even ask subjects, you? Even when you chose subjects at school. Yeah, you had no choices. You, you did, but it's like, will that help with becoming a better yeah. witness? If not, don't choose it. So everything was really predetermined for me. And I just wish I was allowed to go off and be who I was. Can I ask you a curveball question? So this might be difficult. What were the benefits of that life though? What were the benefits of not, of everything being regimented and of you having to not do things for yourself? What were the benefits of that? I suppose self-discipline. I think I became very self-disciplined, getting up routines, being on time. So how has that benefited you as an adult now that's left? Um, what are the benefits of that still? Respecting I think I think I'm industrious mm -hmm. because I can meet deadlines and um, what other benefits come from having had little ide little um, sense of your own identity there's got to be other benefits what are they what that I have now mm -hmm. if I, my own identity to be honest I don't think I've worked out who I am mm -hmm. so I don't I, I'm on the journey what does that allow you to do to work out who I am mm -hmm. it gets me to explore and I guess I'm allowed to explore now and uh, try and try things. Yeah. Try new. Everything is new. Yeah, uh, that's true. Everything is new. Birthday parties were new. Yeah. Christmas was new. Um, so many things were new. Yeah. That I've never experienced. Getting into a career was new. Yeah. Going to uni was new. Yeah. Writing, writing reports and. Yeah, just things. How about things. impacting kids' lives? Because I know as a teacher you do a lot of welfare work. Um, do you think that's a benefit of your experiences without your own sense of identity growing up? Or maybe just of the general experiences of being a JW? Do you think that's given you a special ability to support children who are struggling? I think... Uh, uh, maybe you're giving me more credit than is due, but I think the only people I can sort of help is other people who have been high, in high control groups. Incorrect. Um, <laughs> this is a safe place. We will continue this discussion about identity. Please feel free to subscribe, leave your comments. If you'd like to tell Renee who you think she is, feel free to. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.